A new update for SteamOS, SteamOS 3.5, has been released in the preview update channel. Go check out, and we're going to cover it. And we're going to cover the new features, some of which have been waiting for that have only been available on Decky Loader until now. Um, you're going to be able to use them on SteamOS 3.5, and I can't wait to talk about it. Let's get into it. I'm Blaze 2K, and if you love Steam Deck content, tech content, and gaming content, and you want more of it on your YouTube homepage every day, please consider clicking that subscribe button down below, guys. Click the subscribe, help us out, and um, yeah, let's get into it, guys. Love you. Thank you for joining us on the video, guys. I want to just give a shout out to pixelbuys.com, link down below in the video description and pinned comment. It's a new website where you can find gift guides, news, all that sort of stuff for Steam Deck, PS5, Xbox, tech and gaming, all of that are on Pixel Buys. And I'm going to be building that out. It's going to be a great place. So please go in there, subscribe, shove your email in, and um, get some cool stuff in your inbox. Um, and I've got the top 10 essential most es essential and best steam deck accessories list on pixel buys please go check it out i've literally <laughs> explained for every one of those 10 accessories why i think they're essential for your steam deck and you really want to go check it out and i've got links to where you could buy all the stuff on there too um so also follow me on x.com i post quite a lot on there as well as posting videos and also go check out our amazon wish list of favorite steam deck accessories which i update quite often so Let's get on to the news. So Steam Deck or Steam OS 3.5 for Steam Deck has been released in the preview update channel. This article comes courtesy of Steam Deck HQ. The number uno place for Steam Deck news. Well, one of the top places for Steam Deck news. And one of the most exciting things I'm looking forward to is this whole color vibrance setting mode now where you can choose you know boost up the vibrance or the color and adjust the color temperature on your steam deck this might be great for like blue light blogging i know they've already had that for a while where you can sort of block the blue light a little bit if you're playing late at night and you don't want it to affect your sleep this that late night those late night gaming sessions um but the one i'm most excited about is the boosted vibrance um setting here now before you'd have to install a decky loader plugin to do that and the reason why you might want to do that is because the Steam Deck's default, the default, the screen that they've put in the Steam Deck just isn't very vibrant. And compared to other consoles like the ROG Ally, like the Nintendo Switch OLED, which is an OLED display, the, the screen on the Steam Deck is just a little bit, a little bit lacking. The colors just don't pop as much as you want them to. And, um, you know, a lot of people have been okay up until now using Decky Loader, a Decky Loader plugin that increases the vibrancy. Very artificial, artificially, but let's be honest it makes a big difference so that's going to be in steam os 3.5 which i'm super excited about um so yeah it's been teased in the beta channels for quite a while and now we're starting to get the first taste of what this massive new update will bring to the table and obviously the big, biggest visual change is the added ability to tune color vibrancy and the temperature to make the screen look much more vibrant there's also some additional settings to enable hdr and vrr for external displays pretty exciting so let's take a look at the change log shall we so let's just say they've added the new vibrancy and color temperature mode, which is going to let you pop those colors or make those colors pop a little bit more on your screen. And if you do have a display, an external monitor that has VRR, variable refresh rate or HDR support, then you can now enable that on the Steam Deck, which is fantastic. So you can really make the use of those new external displays that you use. I don't really use an external display with my Steam Deck too much unless I'm like streaming on the channel on here on YouTube or on Twitch, but still handy nonetheless, right? Now they also have a rework quick access scaling settings um, to separate scaling from filtering adding stretch and zoom scaling as new options to handle different aspect ratios so if you if there's situations where you maybe are playing a game that doesn't have the option to go to 16 by 10 aspect ratio and that's maybe six fixed at 16 uh, 16 by 9 you can maybe just choose to scale it up and stretch the image or well <laughs> Just basically like zoom it in just to get rid of those black bars at the top and bottom so that's pretty cool that they've added that in there they're also going to be fixing the touch screen orientation while the external display is connected so apparently that might be an issue for some people compositing is now avoided in additional scenarios reducing latency and stutter in situations with multiple overlays on screen that is a big deal and they've improved latency in certain situations but the application renders slower than the display's refresh rate oh nice they've also fixed an issue where certain workloads would exhibit severe cpu performance issues unless smt was manually disabled external storage devices are now auto mounted when connected to the steam deck to format or manage storage devices use the new device management interface and settings and storage i know a lot of people have been asking 
asking for this in the SteamOS UI settings. I'm not sure if you can do that now do this, but if you can, that's pretty cool. You don't have to go into the desktop mode to mess around with device management, external um, storage devices. They've updated the graphics drivers with many performance and functionality improvements improved performance for starfield let's go fix view model corruption in amnesia the bunker and launch failures for immortals of avium and Ka kaiju agogo cool improved bluetooth connection stability especially with multiple controllers that's a big issue for a lot of people slightly improved sleep and resume speed so looks like there are applying changes across the board here implemented switching between controller bindings and mouse and keyboard desktop bindings by long pressing options in the linux head steam drive to match Steam's de default um, desktop configuration. They've improved feed transitions between applications. Fantastic. The contents of the performance overlay can now be customized by creating a config mango hud presets.conf configuration file. Fix the bug where some games could appear stretched if their window size didn't match their swap chain size. For example, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 fixed Disgaea PC needing to be tapped on before input works, and they fixed physical dimensions report to games, fixing some issues with an incorrect aspect ratio, sometimes being detected, aka Returnal, as an example. Worked around a problem where a loud tearing would cause heavy stuttering. If the performance overlay or other overlays appeared on screen, tearing is now impossible in such situations, and the performance overlay would be disabled for best results. They fixed the problem where the keyboard input would not be detected in Overwatch 2. Oh, Ooh, that's that kind of bug annoys me. It annoys the crap out of me. Thank God I don't play Overwatch 2. Controller firmware fixed an issue where some thumbstick touch sensors would lose touch periodically. That's happened a couple, more than a couple of occasions for me. Now, firmware 1.16 um, added voltage off offset settings. Nice. Apparently, this can help a lot with your um, Starfield performance. Improved robustness of the firmware settings. Reset cord, volume down, and quick access, and power against some boot hang scenarios. Fixed a rare issue with, that would set the TDP limit too low, causing CPU GPU frequencies to be stuck at 400 millihertz and 200 millihertz, respectively. This has been a massive issue, guys, on at least on the Steam Deck Reddit. People are a lot of people have actually RMA their Steam Deck because of this issue. And I actually had this issue myself. Thank God it fixed itself after afterwards. I was booting up F1 2022, playing a little bit of racing games and a little bit of racing, and um basically the performance just like went to crap. It was like less than 30 frames a second. And the TDP of the GPU, it was set like or at like 400 millihertz. Or was it 800? No, I think it was 400. And I couldn't figure out why. I like restarted the game, did everything, just nothing helped until I restarted the Steam Deck and thank God it started working again. And a lot of people have actually had to RMA their Steam Decks because they've restarted their Steam Decks, they've re reset a lot of things, and um, it's still stuck at 400 millihertz. So they've had to just contact Valve or Steam and um, basically send them their Steam Deck to get repaired. And some are coming back still having the same issue. So I'm glad they fixed that via firmware update. Fixed an issue when the charging light would turn back on when plugged in for a while after fully charged. That's happened a few times to me as well. They've updated the Arch Linux base. This update pulls in newer performance, security, and stability uh, fixes for underlying packages that are the foundation of SteamOS. Again, we're going to see some performance upgrades, um, improvements because of this. And most notably, this includes recent changes to KDE Plasma, Steam's desktop mode. Full notes on these updates can be found on the KDE's website here. Here's a few of the highlights. New window tiling system. Nice. Updated Discover App Store software manager with a new homepage and improved search always welcome. Discover can now perform system updates from the desktop and updated desktop widgets. Very nice guys, very nice. Um, so there you go guys, the new SteamOS 3.5, it's been released in a preview update channel. Go download it if you like the sound of some of those improvements. Thank you for watching this video and kudos again to Steam Deck HQ for being the best place for Steam Deck news. On point as always. Um, and thank you for posting the release notes. So yeah, there we go. I'll put a link to Steam Deck HQ down below in the video description. And like I says, go check out pixelbuys.com, our new website where you'd find the top 10 best Steam Deck accessories. I'm going to be posting more Steam Deck stuff there all the time and more accessories, all the best stuff you could buy. And maybe doing some reviews for some accessories that I've been, that I've received here on the channel um, that you might want to see, like that portable OLED monitor from Inokin, Inokin, which is absolutely fantastic. And I've been meaning to do a video review on it for a long time, and I'll probably include the video on here once I do the video. But yeah, pixelbuys.com, go check it out and go check out our Steam list, our, sorry, our Amazon list of all the best Steam Deck accessories. All the links you need are in the video description and the top pinned comment in the comment section. Let me know, guys, if you're excited for Steam 
OS 3.5. Some of you might already have it, in, like have it activated via the preview um, channel. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you're excited by any of what you heard here. And um, again, go check out Steam Deck HQ, Pixelbuys.com, and the Amazon list. Anyways, peace out. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Blaze, and if you love Steam Deck H uh, Steam Deck content, hard um, tech content, gaming content. And you want more of it in your homepage every day, please click subscribe and click the bell icon. Anyways, guys, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye. Let's go.